and right into a team meeting, so nonstop. But uh, good to see everyone. Uh, appreciate the coverage that we had at Sunbelt Media Days. Uh, really appreciate all that you do, and it's an exciting time. Uh, I spoke about it after practice one, uh, post-practice, but we've been through two practices. Uh, we're in the infant stages of really building our identity, building our personality. We're responsible for what we create on a daily basis. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, the next evolution of our football team begins when we go shells. And, you know, when you put the helmets on, that's a growing stage. Then the next phase, the shells, that's different. Then the next phase, full pads, that's different. I think, you know, we've had a very, very productive summer. But when you put the helmets on, everything changes. Then when you put the shells on, then the pads. You know, so it's completely different, and we have to embrace that process. We cannot be outcome-oriented. Uh, we have to be process-driven with everything that we do, and I think that's the biggest thing for this football team um, is, you know, the consistency I spoke about when you put the helmets on. The first thing you want to do is really establish the, the tempo and the pace by which you work and the way you practice. Then the next thing is what you ver value culturally in terms of ball security, working on taking the football away, the fundamentals, the details, the small things that we talk about, about playing winning football, you know, really focusing on the things we need to do to improve with this football team. The great exciting thing is no two teams are ever the same. Like we, when we embarked on this journey in January and February, it's new opportunities for leadership, new opportunities for different roles. You know, some individuals had what we call LRPs, limited role players. Now those limited role players kind of go into every down players. So those are great opportunities for everyone. Um, I have liked our mental disposition of this football team so far, but again, we're in the infant stages of building, you know, what we want to be, what we want to become. But I've really liked our mindset. I've liked our work capacity. Uh, I've liked just their whole mental approach to training camp. You know, everyone wants to ask about the quarterback position, uh, but it's more than that. It's, it's we have to play winning football, as we've talked about since the moment we walked in the door, at all nine position. All nine position groups have to understand what it is to play winning football. We've defined that for them. We grade it on every single day. We're now grading ball disruptions and takeaways and all those things that go into playing winning football. But for us also, it's the maturity and the, and the leadership, the connection, the connectivity. We only have 11 seniors uh, on this football team. So the maturity's at a premium, the connection's at a premium, the accountability's at a premium. You know, as soon as this press conference concludes, we'll do a team meeting and we'll go right into fourth and one, something we've done since January. And today's topic is accountability. And we'll have some guest speakers here in the next couple of days come in and spend some time with our football team as well. But when we talk about the, the quarterback position, you know, I've, I've learned you never put a time frame on it. You kind of let it just happen. When it happens, it happens when somebody takes it over. But for us, it's not just really who's our starting quarterback. It's all three of the individuals, it's the entire quarterback room getting better and better every single day. And that's what we focused on. And again, I think for this football team, it's process oriented, not outcome oriented. And that's even at the quarterback position and we'll let it happen. We've been able to what we call two spot in practice, which we have not been able to do since we've been here. So we have a little bit more depth in the program. I think the other thing when we talk about playing winning football at the nine position groups, it's also the quality of uh, depth that you have in your football program. We're not there yet, but it's remarkably different. It's night and day different. So I'm excited to where we're going. But I think the other thing is training camp goes on. It's the ability when we talk about having 11 seniors and we talk about connection and we talk about leadership being at a premium, it's how can we sustain? You know, how can we sustain training camp? You know, when our body's tired, you know, when our mind's tired, you're never gonna be 100% healthy now. That's the game of football. So that maturation process of embracing practice every day, embracing the process of being a better team every single day, the toughness, the mentality. You know, when the final game concluded last year, in front of y'all, I said we had to be a much tougher football team 
a much tougher football program. And there's three elements of toughness. There's physical, there's mental, and there's emotional. And so, you know, we're working our way towards that. You have to promote toughness in your program every single day. Our players have embraced that, but I'm excited to see the next phase when the shoulder pads come on, when the, when the pads come on, to see the next process and the journey of this football team. Uh, like, again, I like where we're at, but it's only been through two practices. So I'll answer any questions you all may have. Yeah, I'm, I appreciate you asking that question because, uh, as everyone knows, associated with our program, we value special teams. And last year we finished number two in the country overall in all of football in terms of when you add all the composites together. Uh, we're picked right now number five. That doesn't, that doesn't uh, get us anything. So it's a program expectation. Uh, again, I like our specialists, obviously having Dominic Zavada back really helps in that. Uh, Will's done a really good job in, in the punting game. But we've, uh, we've also been able to add uh, the depth and the quality depth for them to have to compete on a daily basis. And then I think the key for us in moving forward is who's going to be our return specialist. Uh, so Courtney Jackson's an individual who's returned punts at Syracuse uh, over the course of his career. Reagan Ely has done a really good job for us in the past there. And then who's going to be our kickoff returner. Um, Jaquez Cross has done a really good job with that. I'm excited about Cedric Hawkins, true freshman right here from Arkansas, who is really challenging him to be our kickoff returner as well. So as we all know, your return teams go as your returners go. But that's something that we work really hard on. And our expectations and demands of our entire special teams game uh, is very prevalent in our program. Coach, I wanted to ask you about just, uh, how important the common Jacob Barish has for your offensive line is and uh, how much you already seen him unique and so can Yeah, uh, you know, our players rally around Jacob Bear. Uh, make no mistake about it, he's the leader in the offensive line room. But I'm, I've been really pleased with that entire group. Uh, McKeelan Thomas is an individual who continues to grow. Hamilton Hall is our left tackle, the transfer from Ole Miss. He's on our leadership group. Uh, so again, you have some individuals that have competitive character. They take pride in what they do. Uh, but Jacob Bears is kind of the anchor, so to speak, of the old line. He's the quarterback. All the line calls go through him. But our players gravitate towards him, and not just in the offensive line room, or not just on the offensive side of the ball, but our entire program. And I think that's the other thing when you see our program evolving is when you have helmets or even shelves, you can't go live, you can't tackle to the ground. So everything is what we call whiz tempo, tomorrow we'll go to thud tempo. But you can tell the athleticism of your team by the bodies that lay on the ground. And when we do team run situation, when we do team run situations, We've had very little piles on the ground, and that's what you need to be able to sustain practice through an entire course of the season. But I've been very pleased to this point in time with Jacob Bear, and really, you know, in the offensive front now, it's the same thing. Who's going to be, it's not the starting five, but who's going to be number six? Who's going to be number seven? Eliza Zolikoffer is an individual, second year in the program, redshirt freshman. Uh, he's come a long way. He's developed, he's dropped the weight. Uh, he substantially changed his body. Uh, he's, ex he's a lot stronger than when he came here, obviously. But I'm excited about him as well. So we have some competition going on on, on a daily basis, and that's what we need to really elevate the play of everybody in that room and our football team. Yep, continued improvement. You know, we spoke about that. Is there still some areas that we have to make marked growth? You know, being able to stop the run, particularly in the fourth quarter, being able to take the football away. Uh, but when you look at it, we finished, I want to say, 118th in creating turnovers. But we had, a, I don't want to misspeak here, but I believe it was nine dropped interceptions. 
So if you if you convert half of those, if we get a couple balls on the ground, we go from 118th to top 10 in the country. And it's all about your effort to the ball, your pursuit of the ball, and taking advantage of those opportunities when they present themselves. We've done more ball drills, like I said, more ball disruptions than we've ever had. But for us to take the next step defensively, it's, make no mistake about it, it's the turnovers, it's stopping the run on, uh, on defense, and then you know limiting explosive plays. If you really look, there's two aspects to winning games. We call it winning the double positive. And if you do this, you get about a 99% chance win. And when you win the double positive, that means you win the explosive play battle and then you win the turnover game as well, the turnover margin. If you can win the explosive plays and you can win the turnover margin, you have about a 99% opportunity of winning the football game. We only won the double positive one time last year we won the football game. And we were, a lot of games we were even, but that's something again, when we talk about football intelligence and, and, and going from level 100 to 200 to 300 in our teaching and our thought process, the other thing we've challenged our, our players with is playing football, not just playing the scheme, not just playing the call, but playing football, having a pre-snap pre checklist. What's the down and distance? What's the field area? What's uh, opponent formation recognition? What's just your opponent recognition in terms of pre-snap cues? What's the time on the clock? All those things that go into before the play even begins. And then part of the effort is the return of getting lined up and doing it all over again. So we really, really focused, and we will throughout the course of training camp, of not just playing the call, but playing the game of football and playing all the things that go into it from a situational aspect to a pre-snap checklist as well. You mentioned that some of the media days, just the culture of this team was different. What do you point to as to, to why that is compared to years one and two? I think first of all, character. Uh, we have great character in our football program. We also have competitive character, and we've really stressed the connectivity. And we got a group of people that really like each other, you know. And you know, one of the foundations of team is trust. I think they trust each other. They like playing with each other. You know, they like being on the field. I like being off the field. Uh, but I think it's that connection. We spend an inordinate amount of time of fostering that in the off season and even throughout the course of training camp. Um, you know, and this this is a great community in terms of a great campus environment. You come here to get a great education, be part of our community, but also be a part of something that's bigger than you, and that's Arkansas State football. And I think we have some players that, that – own the football team now. And I think the other thing is, is we have a lot of players that have really invested in it. And so the more you invest in something, the more you own it. And I think they have that. But I think just the overall connection, uh, I think the other thing in today's world of where we're at is the love of the game, the love for football. Do they love football? Do they love the grind? Do they love this part of it? Do they love the grind of the process? and not becoming outcome oriented. All those things I think have really go in, but as we all know with your culture, I told our team this yesterday, you have to fight for your culture every day. One bad moment, one bad opportunity, you can lose your culture if you don't own it. And so we're very cognizant of our culture each and every day. But I think for us, you can have a bad moment, you can't have a bad day. And I think that's where you know, we have not handled adversity well in the past when something's gone, not gone our way. We've not done a particularly good job of being able to handle that and really just have a bad moment from it and learn from it. You win or you learn. And so I think when you, when you have leadership, you're able to overcome the adversity. And so I think we have that now. What do you need to see out of your defensive line this year? Consistency. Uh, consistency in everything that we do in our get off, our hand placement, um, our gap integrity of being able to hold double teams, let our linebackers run through, and then the ability to impact the quarterback. I think everything is the ability to affect the quarterback in today's game. And it doesn't necessarily have to be by sacks, you know, sacking the football, which we talk about going after the ball. You know, on defense, there, you play, you, for one thing, you hunt the football. You have to go after the football in every single down. 
But I think just the consistency and performance, play in and play out in terms of gap integrity, the fundamentals and details not getting cut out of your gap, understanding the details when we move the front, your footwork, your leverage, your pad level, and then competition. Uh, you know, we have to get better in a hurry in that group. They all understand that. We all know that. You know, winning football, and we talk about it, nine position groups, but winning football as a team, it starts up front in the offensive and defensive lines. We talked about promoting toughness on a daily basis. You have to be tough to play in the, in the lines of scrimmage, and not just from a physical standpoint, but from a mental and emotional standpoint as well. Coach, I know you've talked a lot about the fourth quarter and being able to finish games yep. this year. What kind of things are you doing differently with the team to kind of emphasize the importance of the fourth quarter? Yeah, well, we've emphasized it all off season. Our off season program, when we get into the morning mat drills, and is called our fourth quarter program. But they're very, very aware of that. Um, you know, as you all know, we had the lead eight times going in the fourth quarter. We've gone back as a staff, uh, you know, in football, you watch everything through cut-ups. We didn't do that. We watch it in its entirety. So to be able to feel the ebbs and flows of a game, uh, the, emo the, the uh, emotion that goes into it, the, the mental part of it, um, the momentum. You know, in the fourth quarter, you have to create your momentum, especially when you go on the road. But how you win the fourth quarter is you have to possess the ball in offense, you got to be able to run the football. You got to get off the field on defense, and we weren't able to do that. So we've studied it as a team. We've watched it. Uh, we do some different things in practice. But I think the other thing now is we need to move forward. That was last year's football team. Last year's football team is gone. Uh, and that's the unique thing. That's a great thing. It's a new season. We have 37 newcomers in our football program that have no idea what happened last year in the fourth quarter. The only way they have an idea is because they've seen it. But you also got to rely on your experienced players that could feel it, sense it. But all of a sudden, it's time, OK, how have we learned? How can we take uh, some of our failures from last year? You never waste a failure. So how can we learn from the things that we that incur during the course of the season? And then how can we be better for it of going through those experiences? So we talk about it, but now it's more the confidence of going into the fourth quarter that, you know, we've practiced it. We have the conditioning. We have the depth. And it's the mindset of our program. But I think the other thing that you come about is that's how close we were. And the margin of victory, as we all know, is very small. And it's usually in the small details that dictate the outcome of the game. But I think the other thing is when you look at the fourth quarter, the game of football can come down to four to six plays, really two to three. A season can come down to four to six plays. And you play all these plays, but you never know what play is going to be the difference between winning and losing. So that's where that mental toughness, that fortitude comes in, that every, every play you play could be a game-changing play. You just never know it at the time. Coach, there's no secret that death was a huge emphasis for you and your staff in the offseason. Over these next three to four weeks, how excited are you to figure out exactly where you are from a depth perspective? 37 newcomers, as you mentioned. How excited are you to see what you truly have? Well, it, it is it's exciting, and that's why we're doing more what we call two-spot than we've ever had. We had not been able to do that. So what that means is we have the same drill going on on two separate fields. So when we're doing pass skelly or pass shell, whatever you want to call it, seven on seven, we actually have two of those going. So you got to have four groups that you can go. If we go a team period, you have four groups that go. So you have to have that depth to be able to practice that way. And what that does is it gives your younger players those reps. You learn through repetitions. You can only sit in meetings for so long. You can only walk through. You learn by doing. And so to have that, that luxury to be able to do that. Now, we're not going to do it the entire camp. We're only doing it the first week. Because I, I think there's other things you got to teach them in terms of style of play, mentality, how we finish plays, you know, all those things that go into playing football. But for right now, we're trying to give them an inordinate of volume of team reps to be able to learn and then get it on video. So we're able to teach off it. And then also, again, the reps of seeing exactly, okay, this individual can help. Maybe this individual needs a little bit more. 
So that's exciting. That's been exciting through two practices, and we'll continue that. Coach, I wanted to ask you about the way how you've seen Charles Willis develop. You know, yeah. Believe it, believe it, believe it. Can't say enough about Char Willikis and what he means to our program. He is one of the leaders not only on defense, but he's one of the leaders of our football team. I think he's a great uh, storyline for our younger players. You know, here's a young man that's a walk-on, came here from Michigan and uh, didn't know anyone and just works every single day. And you talk about an individual who's connected to his teammates, he's connected to his teammates. He's part of our culture setters. Um, it's important to him, playing football here is important to him. So uh, he has my total respect, but not only mine, the entire team's respect. And he's playing the best football that he's played right now. He's cerebral, he's playing with great effort. Uh, he's getting everyone lined up. As we all know, the Mike linebacker is one of your quarterbacks of your defense. They're kind of your heart and soul. They're going to look to you. And so uh, as of today, I've been really excited about him, and I know our coaching staff has as well. Guys, anything else for Coach Jones? All right. Thank you, right. Coach. We appreciate it. Again, I, I appreciate everything you guys do, and you know we're always here for you all. And uh, we have a great community that supports this football program and supports what we're doing. And you guys are a big part of that. So the turnout today is really exciting to see that it's football time here. So thank you and look forward to seeing you guys throughout the course of the season. Uh, did, did